Hello, Probert. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to But It Was Alien. <laughs> the number one extraterrestrial comedy podcast featuring two former MIBs. Your host for today is the smooth talking, moonwalking, <laughs> chunk moonwalker. And I'm joined as always. By the five foot four F rum loving yeah. punk hey. Kevin the Grey, whose beard is looking rather shiny today. Is that a special cream you've used, Kev? You gave it to me before we started recording. Nice. Yeah, it's a little bit sticky, but once you rub it in, it's all right. Nice. Thank you for that. I'm You're really, more than it's really, welcome. Really nice. Smells a bit funky. You are it's kind more of, than welcome. Smells a little bit like seawater. Seawater mixed in with fresh cut grass. So a slightly salty tang to it. Why do you know it's salty? Can you not smell? You can smell Here, salt. Here, take some. No, it's okay. Picked it up from uh, Hobo down the street. He was hey, selling man. them for 50p, so I thought I'd get you one. He may have good taste. He does have good taste. The number one and only extraterrestrial comedy podcast. If there's another one, let us know. We will take them out. Not because we're competitive or jealous. I say loading my pistol, cocking the gun, looking around the room. Are there any other around here? Today's probe starts in the summer of 1975. A husband and wife are out camping with a friend. I feel we just can't call them a husband and wife <laughs> and friend. We definitely can't. So let's figure out some names for them, shall we? Not Kevin. Hmm. Not Kevin. <laughs> I know. We've had enough Kevins lately. Let's use their real names, or at least the names given in the probe. By you. Martin and Julie Sims, and Mark. <laughs> Mark who? Just Mark. He's a Mark! They were all on a camping trip. Quotation marks. Together near Pembrokeshire. Hello. Coastal path in Wales. In Wales. I hope they stopped by to say hello to Mrs. Granville and gave her some clean underwear. Let's hope so. During their trip, they wandered off to find a pub so that they could get something to eat. Clearly, they weren't living off the land or off the baked beans or food they'd taken with them. Camping, huh? That's my kind of camping. They soon found a pub and they ate their food. They left and made their way back to their campsite. Was it a hotel? They went camping. As they trundled back, bellies full from pie and mash, they noticed something strange in a field nearby. There was a bright white orb of light hovering above the ground. What could it be? It was roughly the size of a football. Huh. Soccer ball to those across the pond. And I have a picture for you there, Greybeard, too. Okay, I'm just going to check out this. What is that? Oh, I've seen that. Where have I seen that? So we have a football with eyes, a mouth and a tongue. And I know I know it from somewhere, but I can't think where. And that's going to bug the shit out of me. And I bet you're not going to tell me. I am not going to tell you. You wanker. Is it a mascot of like the World Cup 94 or something random? Could it be? I don't know. Are you going to tell me? I can see down its tonsils. My mouth started watering when you said mashed potato, by the way. Everybody knows. ba ba da 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 Kevin loves mashed potatoes! Yeah. I, I can't remember where the ball is from, and I know I've seen it. <laughs> You're an arse hat. So the threesome decided, after a short while of staring at it, they'd just carry on their merry little way. So they did. But as they did, it seems like the orb was heading in the same direction. So they started to play a game with it. I want to play a game. They'd move, then stop. And the orb would do the same. They move quicker and stop. And the orb would do the same. It was at this moment that they knew they'd potentially fucked up. So they ran as fast as they could to their tents without looking back. And there they hid. Was it Shag Hardware, baby? Where the people started waving to the alien and it waved back. Then they started making signs and the alien did the same back. Was that Shag Har That wasn't Shag Harbour. It may not have been. I'm asking the question. Was it Shag Harbour, baby? Or was that... No, that was... That um, was Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. Wasn't that Papa probed Guinea. by the pier? 
We've done so many probes. I think it was probed by the pier, wasn't it? Because it was two people sitting on the pier. Continue. <laughs> I think it's Bill. I think it's the no, Bill. He saw one. the people on the thing in the sky. Yeah. That's not what and I'm thinking. Waved. It was oh. someone who saw people in a flying saucer. I'm fairly certain it's probed by the pier now that I say it because it wasn't Bane. We covered probed by the pier. Yeah. It's the, that's the title of the episode Probe by the pier. Can't remember it. <laughs> We have definitely recorded this episode. It's just a case I can't remember where it was. I don't remember a title probed by the pier. I do. Oh, you son of a bitch. There you go. Buff Ledge, probed by the pier. Now, if you would have said Buff Ledge, I would have known what you were on about. So, yeah, it was the 16-year-old and the 19-year-old on the pier. Do you remember? Oh, There you go. Yes, I do. Yeah, and it was at this point they knew that they had fucked up. up. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll let you off dickhead now the fucking gray bollocks has been proven right let's continue shall we (laughs) (laughs) you're not bitter never following on from the event they weren't sure of what they had seen not a scooby-doo but they all believe that it was something extraordinary they agree it couldn't have been a prankster and they also believe it couldn't have been a planet or the moon that they were looking at not content with not knowing the next few years saw Martin look into the matter further. Whoa. Which brought us the evidence that we need, Kevin. There had been other similar sightings in the area at the same damn time. Well, old boy, Granville. <laughs> and that's all the evidence we need. <laughs> It'd be a pretty small moon if it was the size of a football floated around wouldn't it do you think I'm the mood. um is it bop it bop it twist it mm-hmm. fuck it you know how to play that version not that version no uh, that must be think... adult bop it <laughs> do you think fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this is an alien version of bop it so it's a little small device that the aliens have accidentally let go that's like doing things and they have to copy it and they don't realize <laughs> it but they're like completing the game wow <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when they win? Well, what happens when you win Bop It? F all, it's a pointless game, it just exists. What is the point of Bop It? Like, is, can you complete it? Is, does it just go on forever? I it's know, incompletable, actually. it's there to depress you because you can't beat it. Isn't it just a kind of reaction game? To test your reflexes. But then it gets quicker and quicker until it's impossible, surely. But then your reflexes get quicker. To a point, but the laws of physics cannot be broken in this way. How do you know? Have you ever completed Bop It? Well, if you've not levelled up enough. <laughs> Granville pulls out Bop It. He's like, Bop It. <laughs> the Bop It starts steaming. Bop It completed. <laughs> then the Bop It sneaks out. Well, fuck it. <laughs> Granville's like, I've never got this far. <laughs> now what do I do? If halfway through Bop It, you just flung it against a wall and it didn't say anything else, have you won? I reckon it would mock you from the floor <laughs> and start trash talking you. <laughs> you can Bop It, could you? You little bop it, bitch. <laughs> I was literally about to say bop you, bitch. Do you remember when we were at school and bop was the word? <laughs> <laughs> As teenagers in school, the word, the cool word that went around for making love to someone was bop. <laughs> so kids would be pointing to like a girl in school or a boy in the school and be like, I'd bop them. I fucking forgot about that. Oh, oh anyone not including me with those labels? <laughs> I'd bop you. <laughs> that's, that's a sharp line and a half, isn't the it? The fucking best one. The best one. A friend of ours, when we were in high school, had a really fit sister. <laughs> and um, his sister used to walk his nephew to school. Oh, okay. So they'd pass the window. And the, <laughs> and the phrase that would literally go out is, there's your sister. Oh, no. I'd bop her one. <laughs> And then the next person would go, so would I. And it would just go, so would I. I'd bop her too. And then he'd go, (laughs) me too. (laughs) And me. (laughs) Fucking bop. (laughs) What a word. (laughs) Ah, kids are stupid. (laughs) Oh dear. You wouldn't even know how to at that age. (laughs) And bop you. And your sister. And pop her one. (laughs) 
We're going to bring the word bop back, oh, folks. I'm so bringing it back. <laughs> um, this episode needs to be called <laughs> Bop It. <laughs> People Google Bop It looking for the game. <laughs> Shafted people. Bop it. (laughs) What? You? (sighs) Where were we? Where were we? Pop. Right, so we've got a floating moon in the sky. Yep. Uh, Floating football. And a couple of years later, we've got other sightings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not a couple of years later, we've got other sightings. A couple of years later, we've got evidence of proof of other sightings that happened at the same time. That's what I meant. But it's not what you said. Careful, I'll bop you. <coughs> I meant in today's terminology, actually. So would I. <laughs> <laughs> but it's changed, hasn't it? Because now it's like to hit someone. Yeah. But that's not what it used to mean, <laughs> folks. Please continue. I've absolutely lost all my shit. We're going to time hop now to July 1995. Time bop. <laughs> <laughs> through my mind but I just didn't want to say it Uh, the Sims had been on a trip out to Alton Towers enjoying roller coasters such as Nemesis and the runaway mine train as the Sims and their children Garant and Julie Jr what sort of name is Garant? I think it's Garant or Garant my question still stands same as they were heading back to their caravan they spotted something strange out the window. A floating bop it. What they spotted was a large metallic object in the sky behind some trees. They believed that the object was approximately 10 to 15 feet across. The object was also allegedly truthfully rotating. Like a bop it. The children both described seeing something different. Julie Jr. described something akin to a more traditional saucer shaped UFO. Whilst Garant describes it as being spherical in nature. It wasn't long before the object disappeared from their view altogether. Did it camouflage itself? Did it ascend? Did it descend? Or did it shoot off? I am thinking at this point that it appears in different ways to two different people. Is it an object from a plane that we can't quite perceive, like a parallel universe of sorts, or even just a a fifth, sixth, seventh, twelfth dimension, whatever it is, that we can't quite perceive, but they've slipped partially into our dimension and the the mind is making it out to be what it can perceive? It's not what it looks like at all. And what it actually looks like is an alien boppet. You didn't know I was going there, did you? I didn't. (laughs) So, and then I reckon that it vanished back into its own plane of existence. So it popped into ours to say hello. Then it went back. Or maybe that's one of the actions on, like, the ninth dimension bop it. Whereas, like, bop it, twist it, fuck it, vanish it. And so the aliens make it vanish and then come back. Can you get on board with that? (laughs) You're trying to hold your shit together so hard, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) And that's what's rotating, because they were doing the twist it one. I'm on board. Excellent. I'm sad this is real. <laughs> Five, six, or seven years later, in either <laughs> July or August... Credible evidence here, then. Garant had left home to cycle to his friends when his mother called to him, causing him to turn. As he turned, to he side. spotted an orb-like object the size of a football slash soccer ball hovering over the house. The size of a bobbit. He alerted his mother to what was above her. As they stood and watched the object, it became more and more apparent that the object they were looking at's movements seemed very controlled. There was a strong wind that day, so it wasn't an object that could be easily blown or controlled by a breeze. Julie Senior wouldn't panic and she wouldn't startle. Since that day in the woods, it would seem that they were being spied on by some form of extraterrestrial. This started to annoy her more than anything. 
they continued to watch it until it disappeared out of view and then she did what anyone would do in that situation. She called the M.O.D. The mods. However, no one answered the phone. (laughs) Doesn't sound very professional. Julie was forced to leave a message on the answering machine. She didn't even get a call back. But what she did get was a military jet flying over her house at low altitude a few days later. This had never happened before. Ever! Jesus. Was this just a coincidence? Not if you ask Julie, it wasn't. So the jet flew over once. Yes. Jets are pretty quick, right? Yes. If they're going to carry out surveillance, surely yes. they're going to need to follow you and do at least a few flybys repeatedly to see what's changing. The jets even generally used for that type of like surveillance on a lady. Wouldn't they weren't they looking her? for her. They were looking to see if there was anything near the property, I would assume. Uh, sorry, I was thinking because she called the, the mods. No, I think... They were like, well, we're going to watch you. No, I Make think sure they don't share your story to see if there was anything out by her house. And they did one quick pass. <clears throat> one quick pass and that was enough. They might have done more. She just might have been out at the time. You're not going to miss a jet, are you? She might have been out at the time. Grocery Rob- shopping. Taking the kids to school. What? Bopping it. Grain. <laughs> Do you think that... Was it Geraint? Geraint? I've forgotten already. I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's kind of like Geralt, isn't it? Do you think this kid was a witcher? (laughs) (laughs) Geraint of Pembrokeshire. Toss a bop for your witcher. Playing it naked in the bath. This is blatantly a bop it. So one pass over by the jet. Mm -hmm. I don't trust this kid. I think he's investigating something. He's... Use some sort of potion to make Julie Senior think that he is her child when actually he's a witcher. <laughs> and he's tracking down a bop it from another plane. That is what I think is happening currently. It would be around a decade later before they had another sighting of something out of the ordinary. This time, Garant, the witcher, who is now an adult, no, he wasn't. He hasn't aged a day. Was driving near Quaker's yard with his girlfriend. This time, it wasn't around the summer, but it was in December. On the day in question, it was around 3pm. Cold, but the sun was out. As they drove, they both noticed an object in the sky above them. The object was spherical in nature and silver in colour. They were so engrossed and fascinated with the object that Garant the Witcher pulled the car over and they got out to have a better look. By car, you of course mean horse, sir. I apologise. Garant pulled the horse over, (laughs) and they got off to have a better look. And he filled it up. Right, Quaker's Yard. Why is it called Quaker's Yard? I can think of two reasons. Yep. Does one have anything to do with porridge? I can think of three reasons. (laughs) One has something to do with porridge. Does the other have to do with actual Quakers? Yes. And the third... Where earthquakes were. (laughs) Yes, sir, you are in my mind. Are you a witcher? Who knows? Or a witch? Who knows? Hmm. Stop staring at me like that. You look like you want to bop me. Repeated bop it sightings. If you lived in Quaker's Yard... Wait, actually, no, that's a good point. So driving near Quaker's Yard, is that like an actual yard? A road? A house? Don't know. Hard to contextualise what exactly is happening here when we don't know what Quaker's Yard is. I need to know more about this quaky place. Picture, if you will, a yard full of earthquakes. <laughs> Constant <laughs> you earthquakes. You think that one earthquake would be enough to fill a yard? Just within this one yard, contained. Sounds like some sort of witcher spell. I'm, I'm not trusting this, Grain. He's thrown some sort of potion. I like how I'm not trusting Grain. He's the good guy. <laughs> He's after all sorts of monsters. I don't suspect them at all. Medusa type things are sitting there in Quaker's yard, sh- actually hands on shaking the ground. Like, I don't trust Grain. <laughs> You're like, fuck What's this What's he witcher. doing? She's just working out. She's fine. Bop it flies you past. Bop her. <laughs> what was different about this sighting to the others? 
is that it appeared that this object was giving off its own light. The couple watched the object for around 10 minutes solid, just stood there, staring. The object would eventually start to ascend slowly in a straight line before it passed through some clouds and hovered once again. The couple continued to stand there, staring, until they'd had enough and got back into their car and continued on their way. Was this just another coincidence, or are this family being watched by something extraterrestrial? <sighs> that frickin' ball. Where is it from? Is it Sabutio or something? Who knows? Son! <laughs> Why you gotta do this to me? My visual memory is pants. You've got <laughs> a second photo just of his eyes. Where is it from? Please, sir. I need some more. A UFO researcher by the name of Dave Hodrian. Don't recall coming across that one before. Investigated the Sims family sightings. <laughs> Sims. <laughs> it's just clipped. Do you reckon... Uh, oh, wait. Do you reckon... No, oh, wait. But seriously, though, do you, do you reckon that... Oh, wait. We, we get to the end of this segment and then I've forgotten. He draws comparisons to another sighting in Wales in the town of Blackville in Bridge End. On this occasion, it was July 1991, approximately six o'clock in the evening, when the witness, John, was driving to a restaurant with his wife and some friends. Trustworthy. As they drove, they encountered an object in a farmer's field nearby. The object was round, and was glowing brightly. John describes that the object was approximately 200 feet from the ground and around 650 feet in front of them. They watched as the object shifted back and forth. I suppose you could say that it wobbled. Another thing they said is that it looked similar to a ball of mercury. Then, out of nowhere, the object sped off into the distance. All four witnesses Describe the object moving so fast that it must have been out of this world. So we're talking tic tac speeds. I'm vouching for John. I mean, all four of them are saying it. Yeah, they all see three it of them in, and a John. They see it in different ways, and we're talking ninety one and earlier. So that strikes me as before drone technology, which you could probably pass these off as today. I don't. Even if the military are many decades ahead of us, I don't see the drones moving that swiftly at this point in time. The Sims. The Sims. What if, now this is a little out there, but what if all these people are being controlled by a little ratty teenager sat at a computer playing a game and he's just got a new pack for said game, an expansion pack, if you will, called Bop It. In this expansion pack, one of the accessories you can equip in homes is a bop it. Now, this little mother trucker can't decide where he wants to put the bop it. So, he's moving it. What are you? Just putting you off. You said you can You're making eyes like there's something in front of you. Oh, this little mother trucker keeps on putting the bop it in front of people, then he's like, no, actually, I'm going to put it over here, not realising that what he's playing is real life for those sims. What if we are a simulation? And we're just being controlled mm -hmm. like the sims. Yeah, and every single person who's got the sims, the game they're playing is actually real for those in the game. Now, wouldn't that be a twist? You're right. <laughs> Another sighting which takes place Another. around the same time as the Geralt, the Witcher. <laughs> Let's just call it the Witcher, yeah. <laughs> Geralt the Sim. <laughs> Geralt the Sim. As the Witcher Sims encounter with his girlfriend. Lovely long blonde hair. Takes place in Wardsley. Kind of grey. In the West Midlands. Kind of silver. A couple had been watching DVDs. All night long on the hold. As they were now preparing to go to sleep. And it was also... 6 a.m. Due to it being winter, it was still dark at that time of morning. Julian decided to take a peek out of the window 
over the quiet street below. Don't do it, Julian. He could see the moon shining brightly in the night sky. So peaceful and made of cheese. Mm. You've mentioned cheese and mashed potato today. I'm hungry. When suddenly something catches his eye. A light. (laughs) Not a normal light. But a boppet. But a strange light moving calmly across the sky. (laughs) He noticed that it appeared to be spherical in nature and would estimate at a later date that it wasn't a light but an object and it was around 50 feet away from his house and around 40 foot above the ground. Julian called to his partner Michelle to come and take a look. In no hurry whatsoever, she did. Just in time to see this thing speed off at 500 miles per hour. 500, (laughs) Kevin. 500 miles per hour. And we have some actual factual evidence to go with this, Grey Nuts. Okay. (laughs) What am I even looking at here? It's like a child's... Actual evidence. So this evidence is a child's picture of a house. I think you'll find it's Julian's picture. You may call it a stick saw. house. I can't read the writing, so you might have to help me out here. I can't read it either. There's a spherical... It looks like a planet with loads of wiggly rings around it. So I'm guessing that's supposed to be like the Mercury ball. Or a misinterpreted boppet. Not a Mercury ball, totally different group. Totally different orb. Yeah, but they, they're all seeing it in different ways. Who's saying it's the same object? Is that not what you're saying by giving me all these cases together? Could be multiple different ones. Then do you want me to conclude on every single one of them? Or? Yes. Puppet. <laughs> well, I'm just going to roll back for a second. 500 miles per hour. Doesn't really seem that quick. I mean, I couldn't run it, but we've covered things that move thousands of miles per hour and even quicker than that. What happened there, sir? Someone walked over my grave. Okay. I was like, have I just shocked you into like a some form of seizure, bless you? Oh, I don't know what to say now. Those speeds are a little bit disappointing, though I suppose if they're estimating it at the time, they may have no real perception as to how fast it moved. I mean, when you're watching something fly off into the distance, how are you to know whether it's 500, 5,000, 500,000 or what miles per hour? But this was Julian, not John, wasn't it? Yes. All right. Screw you, Julian. So to summarise, we have the story of The Sims. A couple who went camping with a friend and encountered a strange football-sized ball that seemed to follow them before they legged it. Then later on in their life, when with their children after visiting Alton Towers, they witness another strange orb-like object. The children describe something different, one being a saucer and one being a sphere-shaped object. Again, another orb-like object is spotted above the Sims house by the young son. After watching it for a while, Mrs. Sims gets annoyed and calls the MOD. She gets no answer but a few days later, a jet does a low fly by the house. When the Witcher was older and driving with his girlfriend, they both witnessed an orb-like object in the sky. They get out of the car and watch it for a while before it ascends and stops. They continue to watch before getting into the car and leaving. We then look at another instance of orbs being seen either nearby or around the same time as The Sims with some actual factual evidence. Debatable. Greybeard. Are the Sims being watched by some type of extraterrestrial beings? I'm not sure that the Sims are being watched by some sort of extraterrestrial being. I think if you're asking me anything, it should be whether there is some sort of otherworldly presence in this area. We know that this area of Wales has had sightings in the past. We know there's a military base nearby. Is that base there because they're experimenting or are they there to keep an eye on this hotbed of otherworldly activity? We also know that Wales is a hotbed 
for UFO activity, according to one of our previous... This is one of those cases where you haven't really given me anything to agree with or whoa, disagree whoa, with. Whoa. Don't go back whoa. to that bloody evidence comment. Now, I know this is one of those cases where I haven't given you much to agree <laughs> with <laughs> or disagree with. You, uh, but <laughs> there's nothing to doubt these people, but there's also nothing to support them. So it's really a leap of faith. Like I feel like, uh, which Indiana Jones film is it when there's the invisible bridge from his angle? I can't remember. <laughs> it's the one with his dad in it. Yeah, so I've not watched Indy since I was like nine. Last, Last Crusade, isn't it? You haven't watched Indy since you were about nine. Mm. Do you not like Indy? I like the Indy films, I just never watched them. Considering your up. collection of films and passion for movies in general, that actually generally shocks me. So am I saying that this is aliens? I mean, it really comes down to whether I'm vouching for John, doesn't it? Or the Sims. Who was Julian again? Not one of the Sims. So can I put him to one side? Yeah. Because that picture was shit. I'm still not saying that it was aliens. But it was aliens! What? (laughs) Would I put my reputation on the line for a John? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. <laughs> you don't know how to conclude now. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, they well, didn't... he says it was aliens. I cannot say this was aliens. <laughs> Who's the sceptical one? I honestly believe that they either saw a light from a lighthouse or... They saw a light from something when they were out camping. Eh, extraterrestrial bop it is what they saw. And anything that they saw afterwards, I think, was just either something like... Could have been a hot air balloon in the sky. We had several witnesses, sir. Several. With actual evidence. A hot evidence. air balloon could have just been up there. A hot air balloon the size of a higher. football? From the ground looking up, <laughs> it's the size of a football. Trust the John. <laughs> and Bop the, it. The fact that these kids just saw something out of the window, just no. There's been times where near where we lived, I've looked out of the window, well, I must have been in my teens, and thought I saw a UFO because I saw these weird red lights. Was this before or after you got probed? Before. Mm-hmm. But it was literally just the lights on a tower at night. Because you just couldn't see the tower in the pitch black, so you just saw the red lights. Although they saw these during the day, it could have just been a hot air balloon. During the day. It could have just been a balloon. Could have been They bop could it. have just been misremembering things. He said it was like 40 feet away. And for Julian, how the hell do you know 500 miles per hour? Like, if anything, he could have just seen a shooting star. An alien shooting star. I don't, I don't really trust Julian. I mean, if you gave me the choice, I'd rule that one out. So, well, Greybeard <laughs> gives you a yes. I am giving you a no. I believe you, this John. This is not <laughs> aliens. So thank you for joining us this week as we probe the case of the Sims family. We are everywhere you would expect us to be. From Facebook at But It Was Aliens. We have a Facebook group, Extraterrestrial Towers. Come and say hello. Hello. We're on... Uh, but it was aliens and we also have a patreon where you can get bonus episodes outside of the extraterrestrial at but it was aliens Stop. Call it UK. as always i've been moonwalker he's been graybeard the truth is up there hash tag Yeah. <laughs>